since Milton Keynes was designated the new town in uh, 1967, there's about 85,000 houses being built in Milton Keynes. Over the last 10 years, we've had 1,500 completions per year in Milton Keynes, and we've taken a sort of land take of about 500 hectares for roads, open space, and residential development. As a fast growing city in particular, we've got the challenge of providing infrastructure and new services for fast growing communities. So we've got to provide new schools, new roads, new services. And those, those bills total into the hundreds of millions over the next few years. So anything we can do to, to make that growth and, and, and bring that efficient and bring those costs down is, is something we're very interested in. As we grow, we're obviously under increasing pressure on our, our services and infrastructure from the growing population. So we've got more traffic, for example, on the roads every day. One of the main functions of my team is pollution control. And one of the main aspects of that is air pollution. The main air pollutants that we're interested in are particulates, nitrogen dioxide, ozone, benzene, an odd substance called 1,3-butadiene, and lead. The young and the old in general are the most vulnerable to pollution, um, pregnant mothers in addition. In terms of air pollution, what we would like to see is the satellite data enabling us to monitor air pollution and how it uh, drops as you go away from our major routes. Satellite imagery, we believe, can really help us with land use planning. Due to growth in this city, we have a land allocated for 23,000 houses, uh, which will take us up to 2026, and that's an average of about 1,750 homes to be built every year from now. It's quite the important that any data supplied by the satellite industry is rectified to British National Grid. Every planning authority in the country uses mapping systems which is based on Ordnance Survey Master Map and all our data assets are captured to that. So it's important that if we get maps from space that we have that rectified so we can see them but then overlay our data on them. If we had satellite imagery say once a quarter then we could find out where sites have been developing and that could cut our site visits down by 80% so we'd only have to visit 20% therefore saving time of officers going out and the cost of travel. Satellite imagery can really help us with environmental monitoring too. We're a city with 22 million trees, so looking at our vegetation cover and any impacts on that or changes in that is really important. We've got a lot of trees and not much of a resource to uh, get round all of them in time. Primarily we're looking at uh, pests and diseases and trees that are under stress, so uh, perhaps large areas where trees are, have got a, a disease that's moving through them um, that perhaps could be picked up from space by either chlorophyll fluorescence or um, thermal imagery is another possibility that we're exploring. Being able to use space services to actually see those trees uh, as they die back and, and uh, see how it spreads will be useful from an academic point of view but also useful from a management point of view in terms of again targeting resources to uh, fell the trees in certain areas or, or monitor trees if, if they're worthy of retaining. Flooding is a national issue and it does look as though it's getting worse. We need to know where the areas of risks are. We need, of course, to monitor recent developments and check where they are in relation to areas which have the potential to flood. One of the big things that satellite data can do is to monitor uh, streams, rivers and things, things like sudden blockages, trees falling, um, malicious acts such as fly tipping into streams, which can cause a, a flooding issue. Like all cities, we need really good high quality data that helps us understand just how we're, we're managing and how things are changing. So satellite uh, imagery, data, information is going to be a really important part of that mix.